uh, Layla Steinberg was reading, flipping through Pac's poetry books and said, wow, this cat is, is gifted, you know. But he didn't really have a place to lay a rest and do his craft, so she let him move in with her. And she said, I know this guy, Atron, who manages Digital Underground, and uh, I'm going to try and put you in touch with him. And she called him and said, this, this kid, he's real special. I wish you'd check him out. And then he he considered signing him, and he called me and said, oh, I got this kid. They think he's real special. I'm thinking about signing him. Would you give him a listen, too? And that was right when we were mixing our first album, Sex Pack. So we went and uh, asked Pac to come through the studio, and he did, and spit a few verses for us. And then we were like, yeah, yeah. You know, we told Adrian, he's definitely got it. It's, uh, let's mess with him. So we started putting this demo together from day one. And even though Sex Pack just came out without him on it, he... uh he was working with us already behind the scenes. We were getting his first album, which became Tupacalypse Now. That was the demo that we had. So when Pac went on tour with us, it was just to kill time because he he got tired of waiting for us to come off tour to, to finish working with him. He said, man, I might be dead or locked up by the time y'all get back. Let, let me roll with y'all. So he would just fill in for, uh, he took Money B's brother Cullen's place and then he would fill in, you know, he was dancing and, and, doing background vocals in the show and helping us roadie and carry equipment and all that. So people's first view of him, the general public's first view of him was in Digital Underground doing background things, but little did they know we were shopping him the whole time. He had a, a album done, you know? Wow. And uh, we definitely, definitely recognized him as an MC. Did you produce most of that album? No, I produced about, about a quarter of it. Most of it was produced by Dion Evans, DJ okay. Impossible, Pac used to call him. He, uh, he did a, a good five or six of them. I, I did three or four of them. Pee Wee did three or four of them. And, uh, well, DJ JZ from Richmond, California. They call him J Beats now. J Beats did a few. And that became Tupacalypse Now, you know. Pac used to call us the uh, Underground Railroad. Produced by the Underground Railroad, and that was all of us, all of his cats. Did you instantly become friends with him? Uh, yeah, for anybody we working with, we just gave him that full 100% love and trust. Pac used to crash on my couch when we was working. He used to, like, you know, hang out with all of us wherever. He'd get a ride in from Marin into Oakland and hang out with us when it was time to go to the studio or time to go on tour or whatever. And then finally, when Got, when we he got signed, we helped him do the applications and got him his first apartment. Wow. In one of the buildings that uh, my man Smooth was managing. Smooth was a singer in Digital Underground, but he also managed these apartments. And that's where Pac had his first apartment in Oakland. Wow. On the Garden Boulevard, yep. And then uh, from that point on, little by little, when I wouldn't see Pac, every time I'd see him again, there was a little something more about him. He, he had a couple of new tattoos, or all of a sudden he got a new car, and then all of a sudden he's in a movie. And all of a sudden it's time to work on a second album. I would come through the studio to drop tracks. And, you know, I would see him at the parties and at the, the sessions, and I'd see him on the road and stuff. But but I wouldn't see him as much. I wouldn't see him as much behind the scenes anymore. Well, once he started getting his thing moving. He was. I would see him like he would see me, like he would see me at the functions and stuff. But in between that, he was doing his thing, you know, going from house to house, different people he knew who made beats, getting a beat from them. That's why if you listen to Tupac's first three or four albums, matter of fact, all of his albums, his whole career, they were always produced by a big variety of people because he wasn't the type of cat to just sit and give one person a shot. You know, yeah, he wasn't waiting for his turn. He was moving around getting his thing done. His turn was the fact that he had an end and he took it and ran with it. Where some cats, you know, might just sit and wait for other people to to, to motivate their moves. Pac was making his moves and following up on every phone call and taking numbers the whole time we was on tour. So when we get off tour, Pac would just get in the streets and follow up on all of those little connections he had made. So if, if two months went by since we've been home, next time I see Pac, he got a half an album did. So I'm on shock. I need a couple from you, but this album's almost done. 
And it was always like, can you do it this week? Can you do it tomorrow? Because I got to turn this shit in three days from now. So it was always a quick thing, Pac. Mm -hmm. Even I Get Around was like the last song to go on that. Wow. that album. I remember when we was mixing it, he was like, man, as soon as you get it mixed, we got a fellow express it to where they master in the album. And, uh, you know, he had his own manager. He had a different record company than this one around. So, so it was like he was part of our clique, but he was definitely a solo entity the whole time. Yeah. You know, the first time some people saw Pac was on Arsenio Hall performing with Digital Underground on, on tour, standing on stage with us. They didn't know that behind the scenes, he, everything was getting ready for him to come out as a solo artist anyway. Yeah. So he didn't care how he was seen in Digital Underground. He was just having fun with us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He was happy to be on a team that was really doing it, getting a chance to, you know, meet people behind the scenes and stuff. And then while we were on tour, even though Digital Underground was the act, that was performing, along with Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah's backup hype person, Rody, was Tretch. He didn't have Naughty by Nature put together yet. And our background person was Pac and a couple other people, so they used to all run together. So Tretch really came up with Pac closer than I did. I'm like six or seven years older than Tupac. Uh -huh. So I had my clicker cast that we ran with. We came up like five years before Pac. Mm -hmm. So... You know what I mean? Our agenda was a little different. Sometimes after the shows, we'd go chill. Yeah. And Pac would go hustle. You see what I'm saying? Because he he still was trying to get on. Yeah. So, you know, it was like, if me and Pac seen each other, it was like, yeah, come on in. Make yourself at home, whatever. Yeah, what's the deal? We, we, we spoke and interacted like family, but just like family, like a brother or a cousin. You don't see them day to day. They get up in the morning to do something else than you do. Yeah. He wasn't like, he didn't get up in the morning with me to go handle the digital underground business. Yeah. That's just a matter of me telling him, hey, you, uh, be here for this show, be here for this studio session. But the day to day stuff, that's me running around doing that. Probably with my manager and my homies. Where with him, he, uh, had his day to day stuff to do too. And he would just tell me, hey, can you come to the studio Friday? So between Monday and Friday, I might not see him. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then the cats like Stretch and, and Tretch were running with them daily. They're running around doing the business with them, going to get the outfits they need, stopping by the guitar center to get the equipment they need, going up to Sam Ash. You know what I mean? Wow. That was his. He had a separate little time schedule that he was on, you know? So in other words, I guess what I'm trying to say is me and Pac were real close, but at the same time, we weren't neck and neck like, you know, we wasn't co-pilots to each other. But I had my co-pilots, and sometimes he would ride on my plane. Sometimes I'd ride on his plane as a guest. He would call us up. It's time to do MTV Unplugged or whatever, MTV Jams. And we would show up and do that with him, you know. And he would have a hotel room for us. And he would have a little itinerary for us. Just like when in the digital days, it was the same thing. We hit him with a phone call, and then he shows up. We got a hotel room for him. When it was digital business... He was just a rider, but he was the captain of his thing. And then when it was Tupac business, I'm just a rider. I just show up and, and be where I'm supposed to be. You know what I mean? Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Like, comment, share. Also go over to UGSForLife.com, download the entire archive, and check out new episodes on Apple Podcasts and Blog Talk Radio.